comes to everyone, and Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines is known as the cult classic vampire RPG. It has everything to do with vampire politics, to interesting dialogue, to even just plain old good vampire elements such as drinking blood or blood magic. What it doesn't have is an easy to understand beginner's experience, especially for people new to role-playing games in general. I've been playing this game for quite a while now, making videos on certain topics, learning about how the game works, so I think I'm pretty qualified enough to give you my thoughts on what you should know as you go through your first playthrough of Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. Without further ado, here's all the tips and tricks I've gathered, learned, thought of, and found online. If you are gonna take one tip from this video, it would be this. If you are gonna play the game, I highly highly recommend installing the unofficial patch first. The game can be a buggy mess and it's almost absolutely necessary to use the patch while playing the game. It'll install support for newer screen resolutions, fixes to broken quests, and even complete remasters to the gameplay, as well as rebalancing. It's quick and easy and I already made a video on how to do that right here. The K button opens up a menu that lets you assign weapons and powers to hotkeys. I didn't find this out while I was doing my first playthrough, but it would have been extremely useful if I did. So there you go. The F8 key will cancel all active powers. This is especially useful for masquerade violating disciplines such as Blood Shield or Protean. Special thanks to Jolly Noodle for letting me know. Do the tutorial, you'll be given a chance to skip it in the first few minutes in the game, but even if this is your second playthrough, you'd want to do it anyway because of all the free stuff you gain from it. Save often, this is an RPG and it's almost a given that you should always save. That and because the game can still be a bit glitchy even with the unofficial patch. It's not that much, but it's always nice to be sure. Playing as a male or female vampire doesn't really matter, nor does it affect quests. This doesn't even affect how NPCs treat you. This includes seduction checks. If you have the unofficial patch installed, you'll be given a choice of history. This will readjust specific skills in the game, certain points as well as abilities. If this is your first playthrough, just ignore this and focus on which clan you want to play as. You can worry about this more on your second playthrough. You'll have more of an idea on what to do after that. As most veterans of the game will tell you, I would highly advise that you stay away from Nosferatus and Malkavians in your first playthrough. Playing as one of those clans will affect certain quests, and even change up some of the game's mechanics and dialogues. If you're not sure of which clan to pick, I'll leave my beginner's guide to clans right here. Certain feats can be a bit complicated to understand, and it's not always clear on what they do or how it affects the game. But luckily, I also made a beginner's guide on feats, attributes, and abilities. I'll also leave that link right here. Don't spend points on boosting up your humanity. While you can do that, there are multitude of other ways you can do that without spending a single point. More on that later. Don't hoard in skill points for too long. The later it gets, the more you receive as a reward. It's really difficult to be a master of one feat in this game, and it's much better to spread out your skill points for an easier time in the game. Hoarding skill points is good, just don't overdo it. If you do, you might get stuck in certain points in the game, particularly big quest locations. Keep your blood pool high. Randomly going into frenzy is not a fun experience. In society, and even in combat, it could break the masquerade. There are lots of locked objects in the game. A reasonably high lockpicking skill, as well as a good hacking ability, will be enough to open most locks in the game, helping you in certain quests. You don't need that much, as blood buff would be sufficient in opening the first few locks you'll encounter. An easy way to gain humanity back is by doing the right thing in certain quests and by dancing in clubs. The whole game map would be divided into four hubs, and every hub has its own nightclub. Dancing in one of these clubs will grant you one humanity point per club. However, you can only get them once, so use them wisely. Keep your humanity up. The more you lose humanity, the more often you'll go into a frenzied state. And like I said a while ago, it's not a fun experience. Take the time to listen to the radio, as well as watch the television, especially if you're Malkavian. <laughs> There are three social feats in the game, Persuasion, Seduction, and Intimidate. I would highly suggest that you forget all about this phrase. 
which one is the best social skill. Looking for the best social feat feels like the wrong way to play an RPG. Obviously, you should do your own thing and do what you want. There's really no wrong way to play a video game, but because of the game's replayability, I personally believe that one should pick the social feat that describes his or her playthrough the most. If you want to be an intimidating vampire, go. If you want to be seductive, sure. If you want to be all about persuasion, then go for it. Do what you want and roleplay however you wish. Being polite and helpful to people can be best during your first playthrough because otherwise certain NPCs wouldn't want your help, leading to less content experience. But like I said, if you want to be an intimidating jerk, then that's pretty fun too. Some of the quests can only be completed once you reach its specified zone. Just because you received and accepted the quest in Santa Monica doesn't mean you can complete it in Santa Monica. You're gonna need to wait until you reach the next zone or until it gets unlocked for you. You. The better you do in a quest, the more skill points you receive. There would be some quests where the giver of the quest specifically said that you should not make a scene, kill anyone, or even be seen. What? Overall, you can fail at doing this and still finish the quest, but you won't receive its complete rewards. Take note of this when you are questing. When you're holding a melee weapon, tab makes you block. When you're holding a weapon with a scope, tab makes you zoom in. When you're holding a weapon with more than one fire mode, tab makes you switch between them. Neat, huh? You can change up the swing of your melee attack by directing it via WASD. I didn't find this completely useful, but it's still worth keeping in the back of your head. Guns suck in the early game, and the only way to make certain guns usable is to heavily invest in the firearms ability or on disciplines that boost that up as well. A good baseline would be 6 on firearms. If you have 6 or even just 5, then you'll be fine. Mostly. But even then, I would highly suggest putting a few points into the melee feat as well as unarmed. This is because it's really difficult to be a master of one combat feat in the game. It will make the game sufficiently difficult for you, especially in the beginning until mid-game. You have to be reasonably skilled in both. Interestingly, combat feats above level 10 still count. This include melee, unarmed, ranged and defense, and with that, it still increases the more points you put into it, even though it doesn't say as much. However, non-combat feats don't, so a level 16 sneaking ability still registers as a level 10 despite it saying level 16. Do with that information however you will. Characters that intend on primarily using guns should invest a few points in the finance skill. Ammunition can be a bit expensive and you can't solely rely on defeated enemies for extra ammo. I personally wouldn't invest too much on haggle, I just think that if you do run out of ammo, just switch to melee. You'll be fine. Oddly enough, attacks that kill your enemy in one hit from outside a certain range don't cause any of the surrounding enemies to go aggro. On larger levels with a sniper rifle, you can pick off the entire map's worth of enemies without any of them trying to get at you. Focus on headshots. Some enemies can be killed with a single shot. Obviously, some don't, but it's better to just headshot everything you see. You never know if it does more damage or not, so you might as well do it. The aforementioned sniper rifle works best if you go for the head. The lethality rating of a weapon is basically how well it works against supernatural enemies. The higher the lethality, the deadlier it is. The flamethrower's extreme lethality makes it trivially easy to kill any vampire you come across with it, even bosses. If your skill with the weapon is below its minimum level, you take a feat adjustment that lowers its lethality. Don't underestimate your feeding ability. While the game never explicitly tells you this, you can suck people dry and kill them even in the middle of combat. This is a vampire game after all, but bear in mind that you are vulnerable while feeding. So jumping on someone's throat with three other guys around him is not the best idea. Stalk works with the sneaking feet instead of traditional sightlines. Just because you're in front of enemies doesn't necessarily mean that they can't see you. That's one of the more confusing aspects in the game. The game's tutorial does a really good job at explaining this, but if you're like me and you're used to modern stealth mechanics, this might get you confused on what to do. When it comes to stealth, focus on the detection number instead. The sneaking feat works on everything in the game except for a select few bosses. Supernatural enemies in particular have such a high detection, it's very difficult to sneak by them, even when using Alphascape. Remember this when you are in stealth sections. If your sneaking does fail, it's best to have your combat feats readily available. You can't really rely on sneaking alone. Get your combat feats reasonably high just in case. Stealth is fun. That one is not really a tip, but I just want to leave that there. 
And as I've said a while ago, I already made a series of beginner's guides all about helping a newbie into the game. You don't necessarily need to watch all of them, just watch what you think works best for you. It'll help a lot. For you and for me. And that's it. Like, comment, and subscribe, ding that notification bell, and tell me, why are you playing Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines? Is it because it's getting popular? It's getting a sequel? You've heard about it from a friend? Whatever it is, tell me in the comment section below. I've been playing this game for a while. I just thought it would be nice to share what I've learned with other people. So, yeah. I'm Sis, and thank you for watching.